Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today we're back with Superfilm Support. Remember, you can go to superfilmsupport.com and ask me any film questions and I'll answer them here on YouTube. So today is a question that I have not gotten directly on an email, but I have been getting a lot through different social medias, Instagram or uh, on YouTube or wherever, on forums. So one of the things is when you start large format and you buy a camera, you are always worried about where do you put a lens? How much bellows do you need? Why are bellows uh, you know, working in a camera and how do they work? So the question is basically, where should I set my lens to have it focus properly or be in range of focus? So that's a question that basically is determined by the lens itself. So for example, in this case, the camera right now I'm using is a Chamonix F1 and it has the normal bellows or what they call the universal, has a bit of normal bellows and then has a bit of bag bellows. They look like sad bellows as some people say. And this is a 58 millimeter uh, Schneider uh, super angle on. So this is an extremely short lens. What does short mean? It means that the focal length is short, which determines the fact that as you can see on the B cam, the lens and the ground glass have to be very, very close. They have to be at 58 millimeters, give or take, for infinity focus. If we were focusing closer, then the lens can be further to the front. And I mean, in a 58, if you go to 100, you're at t two times. So this should be magnified extremely. So you probably are never gonna be more than that 58 to 65-ish millimeter. So that should determine where you put your lens. So I'm going to extend it a little bit more so I can raise the lens and change in this case. So I'm going to take this lens off and in this case with the Chamonix you have to grab the front and basically move these two little wheels sideways and the lens would drop. So I have the lens, I'm going to take out the 58 and I'm going to grab a 150 mil uh, that I have here at Rodenstock. Actually yeah 150 Apple CRNR S. I'm gonna place it there. So now that I put the lens here, I would look through my ground glass. Let me level the bellows a little bit. I would look at my ground glass and I wouldn't find focus. Everything would be blurry. And as much as I would extend, maybe not find focus and be all worried, oh, my lens is not working or my camera is not working, this is much of a beginner's uh, mistake is to think that anywhere I screw it, it should work. But what you should do is the same thing from the front of the lens or the middle of the lens to the ground glass, this should be around 150 millimeters. So if that is something that we can't guarantee where we are, I would take off the front standard. And this is very different on every camera. On, for example, the one that they asked me about was a Toyo 45A. And that is like, you basically clip it and you advance it wherever you want and you lock it. You can have marks or etches or infinity stops, but if you don't, you just have to sort of guesstimate it. So like I'm gonna guesstimate around there, which is like almost the middle point of the Chamonix F1. I'm gonna screw on and excuse if the screwing and the leveling and everything is not perfect. I'm doing it on camera, it's not that easy. I'm gonna put it down to around zeroing, uh, which would be aligning the white dot that's on the side. And this should be around 150 millimeters. So 150 millimeter, that should be focused at infinity. And like I said, infinity, then you, the more you extend it and put it far away, the more you're getting into macro mode. And what I mean by macro is focusing closer to the point where you can do extreme macros with large format because that's the beauty of it. The bellows will let you do that. So. Um, for example, like a 150, maybe this would be portrait, uh, like a full body portrait, and maybe this would be like a head a shot of only your head and so on, like that. So what I recommend, I recommend that you usually get around the ballpark of what you need, and usually for that I have my camera racked all the way to the back, so focus should be where I consider it to be the starting point, which in this camera is there. This should be 150 and there I can extend it more. One thing to consider is when you use extreme wide angle lenses like this 58, uh, like I said, 58 super angle on from Schneider is that you will be able to see the bed of the camera or the rails of the camera. So you don't wanna have your front standard all the way to the back and that's it. For that uh, case, what the Chamonix does have, which I'm doing in this case, is has the back, uh, the back uh, frame can extend or go back. So like in this case, I can take it to the back or I can even make it shorter. For wide angle lens, usually you wanna have it all the way to the front and then you put your 
wide angle lens on the front and then you don't see the bed or the rails. For example, if I was gonna be using the 72 that I have over here, I would do exactly that. One thing also to mention is when you're using extremely wide angle lenses, you might wanna use back bellows. In the case of the Chamonix, I have some back bellows here, so I'm gonna go ahead and change them. I have a video on how to change this, but it's very simple. Basically unscrew the back and remove the front. And then I would use back bellows that come in this little pouch and put them on the camera itself. Back bellows from Chamonix are pretty affordable and I highly recommend them if you are gonna be doing some like large format movements with anything that's wider than a 90, even a 90 if you're going extremely uh, for the extremes. So this would go all the way to the back. I then screw this on all the way and I screw the other one on. But basically what I mean by this is like, if you're using a 150 or a 120-ish, unless you're doing extremely mo uh, moves with a 120, which there are some 8x10 120s, uh, you should just be fine with uh, the normal bellows. You don't need extra bag bellows. So this would go here. Let me see if I can put it in there. Things don't work when you're on camera. There we go. So now we're with the bag bellows all the way attached. You want to always take out the bellows out of the frame or the picture um, and now I would be able to keep this locked in the front take the standard as far back as I need to and as you can see the bellows actually just like swallow uh, you know the can the front standard and I can grab my extremely wide 72 XL lens and oh Sorry guys, this is the 90 mil, which won't attach. So let's go with the extremely wide 58 uh, mil. So I would go here, attach it again, put it there. And now I can do even closer and closer and closer. Let's say that would be infinity focus on the 58, which is basically the front standard almost swallowed by the back standard. And now the good thing about the back bell is it will let me do rise and fall, it lets me do shift, it lets me do tilt and everything that you want to do with this lens. Do remember that extremely wide angle lenses usually don't have the biggest circle, so you can't do a ton of movement. Like this 58 has 166 millimeter circle, so you don't want to be doing like any huge rises or drops unless you would be using a medium format back, like a six by seven, six by nine back. That would be awesome because then you can do all kinds of crazy movements. Also, you would need the center filter for this lens if you're doing very extreme movements. But yeah, basically that's to answer your question is that like you have to put your lens at approximately its focal length from the back frame. So if a lens is 150, you would have it at 150 millimeter from the front and the back. If it's a 300, 300 and 300, uh, basically the distance. That is why on some cameras, especially field cameras, you cannot use very long lenses like a 450 or 600 millimeter. And that's why the manufacturers in those cases created the telephoto lenses like the 360T from Fuji or the Nikkor 300T and so on. So these lenses are maybe they don't exist. I think it's a 400T from Nikon. So this lenses will let you find uh, infinity focus, not a 400, but shorter, sometimes 270 mil or something like that. And that's what you would use. Like I said, this is an extremely common question and usually it's figured out quite fast, but still for those people that have hard time finding that focus and being worried about their lens being mounted the wrong way or missing an element or maybe not having you know the right lens for the right camera, the ground glass being out of place and so on, this is the video for you guys. I hope that helped. As always, this is Superfilm Support. Thanks for watching. And remember, Superfilm Support happens thanks to Patreons and PayPal donations. I'll leave the link below if you want to see more videos of me explaining certain topics about film that are not the usual hot topics on YouTube or the internet. Thanks for watching, guys, and see you in the next one. Bye.